Make some noise going into game one, T.Y. versus Rogue here in this best of five. Introducing our first player here in the bottom left, in the blue, he is T. And his opponent here in the upper right, in the red, the defending world champion. Give it up for Rogue. Really looking forward to what types of strategies we're going to see early on here in the series. Of course, you know, you kind of set the pace with what you do in game one. Are we going to see something aggressive out of TY Rogue? I'm not, I'm not thinking as much, right? The Zerg player oftentimes in this matchup is the reactive player, the player trying to figure out what is my opponent doing and how can I stop it? Yeah, exactly. Going into this, we already see nothing really out of the ordinary so far. I know that Maro's really popularized a lot of proxy plays, hiding stuff in the middle of the map, but TY does march to his own beat. We see, mm -hmm. uh, just to begin things, everything inside of his base. Now, of course, that's very normal, but it is worth pointing out that a lot of these players have very, very different styles, even right off at the bat. Yes, it's, it's certainly true. You know, uh, TY is a player that he has a lot of kind of, I would call them wonky early game builds. You know, he is one of the guys who really helped to invent the uh, ghost mech openers. Uh, we've seen all sorts of strange strategies from him, and he's one of the better mech players against Zerg, but if your opponent sniffs that out early, that could be to your detriment as a Terran. Yeah, let's see if both TY and Rogue actually come out here with more feeler builds, trying to get a read on mm. exactly how each player is playing the matchup. There's a lot of debate on uh, what's the best way to play a best of five. And I think the most important factor is to be very unpredictable. Um, you know, when you're playing a long series like this, each game you play, like game one, can give the other player data on mm -hmm. what they should look out for in game two. Um, but so far, no cheeses, no all-ins, nothing crazy. No, just a quick three hatcheries coming up from Rogue. Nothing too odd about that. Over on TY's side, he does have his command center on the way, getting the reactor for that factory, likely to get some Hellions out so he can maintain map control, but nothing out of the ordinary. So far, so good. We just have a couple more drones being produced here. We see that the factory is on the way, and we have that Reaper out now to try to scout or deny anything that might be coming forward. And this is where we see normal strategy diverge a little bit. TY going to instantly add a third command center. So this is off of almost nothing, right? He's getting into Hellions. Yeah, he went ahead and made a Reaper. Whatever. He doesn't have a lot of tech. He doesn't have a lot of units. He's playing a little bit greedy here. Yeah, this is cool. So he's going to come in here and right away try to get a third base set up. Mm -hmm. Now, this can really put you ahead as long as your opponent doesn't try to punish you. There's also the option for Rogue to try to match this by expanding uh, as well on his own. But when you do this three command center play, you got to be careful because uh, a player who can react very quickly mm -hmm. could identify this, try to come in there and punish. I mean, you don't have a lot of attacking units if you're getting a third base right away. Yeah, but as we just saw right there, right, he's kind of patrolling his bases. He's got the Reaper in front. He's got the Marine in the main base. This is to chase away Overlords to say, hey, you want to scout me? It's going to cost you. You're going to lose an Overlord, get supply blocked. And that's not something Rogue wants. So right now, he has no idea what TY is really up to. Yeah, and that's one of the big factors here. Of course, in a game of incomplete information, it's so important uh, that you try to get that read because he might be thinking, okay, there's a mm. possible timing attack coming out here. Maybe he's, uh, you could be going mech. There's so many different ways to play this matchup. So uh, sniffing out exactly what your opponent's doing is so important. It, it truly is. Now you can see he's just kind of playing very defensively here. He's got a decent creep spread, three queens patrolling around. These are to catch any Hellions coming across the map, any Reapers as well, and make sure he doesn't lose drones. He's even getting a Roach Warren right now. Oh, it looks like TY might have been able to fake out uh, Rogue back there. Rogue was already going back with his Queens to try and intercept the next movement there. Nice snipe actually takes out the Reaper as well. So far, Rogue has been completely bulletproof. Mm -hmm. Now, TY, he's getting that Raven that's going to allow him a little bit more harassment. Maybe he can kill off some creep tumors and keep that back a bit. And that's a great way for him to play this game right now. You know, if you don't try to stop that creep spread from going across the map, your later on pushes when you try to kill Rogue are going to be very ineffective. So we have Stim starting a little bit later than you would normally have. Uh, tanks coming out here as well. Um, 
Taryn is very close to getting um, that third actually set up here for the time being. But for now, he's just going to power up. I like coming out here with the Marines. If you can take out an Overlord or an extra Zergling there, it's going to darken the map for Zerg. And then this can make it a much more easy situation to surprise them if you do poke in later on. That is exactly what he is going for. But right now, Rogue is playing pretty carefully. He's making seven roaches. He's not exactly sure what TY is coming out with. But we know. We can see. He's come up here to clear a little bit of creep see if he can pick off a couple units here and there. And of course, anytime you're forcing your opponent to make units, they're not making drones. And you can really see the emphasis on economy here. Just the fact that he put a Raven in here with the Hellions so mm -hmm. he can sweep to take out creep tumors. And then he has more mules back at home. So the Econ engine back here for TY is looking really good. But it seems like it's also being matched here. Um, by Rogue. Double Evolution mm -hmm. Chamber coming down. It appears this game is setting up to be a long and epic one. Yeah, it really does look that way right now. A couple of roaches coming across the map right now. This isn't too many, so I'm not expecting to see TY straight up die from this, especially with those siege tanks there. Okay, we've got some Ravagers being made, and this might force TY to try to back up here. Now, the presence of the Lings, the Roaches, and the Ravagers did force that third command center to be lifted, mm -hmm. um, but TY now comes out, he should be able to reclaim that, but there is the possibility that Rogue pokes in again. Yeah, you know, this game is actually looking really interesting right now. If you look at the strategies they're going for, right? Rogue has taken his fourth base, TY finally landing his third, but it's actually Roach play coming out of Rogue. So he's going to max out very quickly, and a lot of this is going to come down to the defense of TY. Is he sieged up in proper locations? Is he hitting his macro, having as many units out there as possible? Because the first big attack that comes out of Rogue is going to be the most dangerous for the whole game. Yeah, this is an interesting route that Rogue has taken this. You don't have to make a lot of roaches, but it is an option. And when you do go for roaches, your supply tends to fill up very, very quickly. So there is going to be an impending attack coming here. We already see Rogue. He's about three-fourths of the way to being completely maxed out. And you're totally right, Artosis. If TY is in position perfectly, mm -hmm. this battering ram of an army could come in here and punt that third command center up back onto the high ground. And TY is going to be in a very defensive position. Yeah, that's where it gets really, really difficult. So that is going to be a focal point of this game. But some nice things going on for TY is that he's been making siege tanks for a long time. His 1-1 one -one is slightly ahead of rogues. So his upgrades are going to be at least equal at all points. And once you get into 2-2 uh, two, two upgrades with a three command center build like this, that's where the counter pressure comes out. So right now what we're looking at is Rogue getting ready to do some damage. I do, again, like this Raven moving around the map, trying to get a read on how many Ravagers are being produced. What is the actual army composition here? Now, we're five seconds out from both armor and missile attacks being finished here for Rogue, and that mm -hmm. should force this attack to commence. We see that army moving southbound right now. And this is timed out exactly with 200 supply from Rogue. Here we go. He is moving in right now. You see his point of view, spreading his units, getting ready. He knows this attack has to work. He's coming in right now. We see corrosive files file forward. The tank still in the back. Meanwhile, a drop over here in the main, both sides being hit pretty heavily surround here. Front Rogue is looking good. It might end up running over TY. Certainly a massive counterattack there, and he is trying to deal with it, but the main army is starting to break through while TY's counter harass is doing some damage to those queens. Okay, it looks like that damage has been done. He's going to keep pressing forward. The third base is fairly exposed. And it looks like those Ravagers going to start rotating around. They'll be able to do a little bit more harassment here, but as even more anti-armor missiles land, he is forcing Rogue back. And I gotta say, I'm liking this right now for TY. Yeah, I think TY's done a great job here. We see some of this army trying to retreat. The reinforcements here from Rogue now coming down to try to continue to defend this up. But with so many Marines and Medivacs here, I'm not sure if this is a wise decision. No, I, I mean, he needs to try to continue to take fights because he's going to lose more and more of an edge. He doesn't even have 2-2 on the way, but I don't know that this is how it's going to get done. I really do feel like Rogue is very stuck right now. He's continuing to make Roaches and Lings. We did see him remake a small amount of drones, but really, tech-wise, TY is progressing very cleanly, and Rogue is in... Uh, he's like in a stasis as far as development goes. His whole setup mm -hmm. was to do so much damage there that it yes. would cripple Terran and Rogue could make the decision from there. But instead, TY's had stellar defense. He's continuing to grow, tack up, he's looking great. And if you look at what he's doing right now, making massive amounts of Marauders and Marines, continuing siege shanks, he's about to have plus two done. Rogue's in a tough spot. He's making about 20 drones now to try to switch us up, getting into his plus two missile attacks. But all this is almost too little too late. 
Uh, you're totally right, Artosis. One thing to keep in mind as well is when you have roaches and ravagers and lings, those don't directly hit air. I mean, Corrosive Vial can connect with an air unit, but it's usually not going to happen at this level of play, which means TY can freely roam the map and abuse the Zerg player with drops, which is exactly what we're seeing here right now. Yeah, this is great to keep Rogue busy. I mean, if you do any damage with this, it's really fantastic for you. In the meantime, TY is just working towards his own giant supply. And the higher your opponent's supply gets, the worse your Roach army does. That's right. You don't want Roachling Ravager in a very late game and we're already passing the 10 minute marker. Now Rogue has packed up and he is headed to the north over here, just moving through this small area. We see he's gonna be pushing right over here and here comes that push right now. Mm, clearing a lot of this creep, a lot of Ravagers being made. So he's gonna be relying on these Crosa Biles a bit, but we've already seen fantastic micro this game out of TY. How many of those Biles are gonna hit because he needs a lot of them? Oh, this is great. A Liberator coming down here is gonna be hitting some of these workers. The Marine drop here as well. Now this is all to draw attention away from this big attack on the high ground over here right now. Oh my God, a huge spread of Siege Shanks and an Anti-Armor Missile comes down. TY shredding through this army right now. Rogue starting to push forward, throwing down his Biles, but so few are connecting. So many Siege Tank shots have come down, and now these Ravagers are going to be cleaned up, and that's it. GG. TY takes game number one. Just fantastically played here by TY. He started out by hiding his opening strategy, that quick three command center. He followed up with some great defense and harassment while Rogue pummeled him with roaches. He held on tight and finished him off strongly. TY never gave up the edge in this game. I think he played really brilliantly back there. That was an excellent opening build. I don't know if TY is going to do it again. He may discard that and try to mix up his play styles. Rogue definitely going to be regretting going so heavy Roach Tech back there because it did not give him any avenues to come up with something in the late game. Well, you know, you got to hand it to him. He went for it and he stayed with it for a bit, but when Terran knows that this build is coming, it's really hard to make it pay off in that long term. You have to kill them right off the bat, and he was unable to do so. We're going to be going into game two momentarily. Again, this is a best of five. Rogue, the defending world champion, is down right now, zero to one. Yeah, it's a tough spot for him to be in. But you know what? TY is actually very well known for taking an early lead in series and not being able to finish the series itself off. I can't even count how many times he's been up two to zero in a best of five and ended up falling at the end. All right, game number two is ready. Let's do this. TY versus Rogue right now. TY with a 1-0 lead. Introducing our first player. In the upper left, in the blue, he is T.Y. And his opponent here in the bottom right, the defending world champion, make some noise for Rogue. And right off the bat, we have T.Y. mixing up a very greedy play in game one, followed up by a double proxy barracks in game number two. Very cool stuff. And this is what you got to do in a best of five if you want to win. You have to play total opposites you, and do everything here. We see these two barracks being set up here right now. And again, we started out in game one with mm -hmm. three command centers right away, Artosis. <laughs> I know, I know, but look at Rogue's build. Rogue is just going into a straight spawning pool here. No gas, no hatchery, no nothing to open up. And this is a fantastic counter. We've seen Rogue hold on to his expansion easily, even against the king of Turax, Maru, when opening up like this. Yeah, this is very interesting. Of course, proxying, the general rule in RTS is this can be a double-edged sword because your buildings are in the middle of the map. Obviously, you can attack your opponent more quickly, but if the rush doesn't work out, your buildings are in the middle of the map. That's not a convenient place mm. for the game as it continues to develop. So um, let's see how this is handled. Now, these overlords are checking <laughs> for exactly this, but this has been tucked back. Now, seeing he that knows, number of SCVs, he you knows don't need exactly. to see the barracks. He knows something's up. <laughs> Three SCVs coming out? Yeah, yeah. you definitely yeah. do know. Okay, here we go. He's going to come up and immediately throw down a bunker. But, of course, this oh, is this going to be like is already on the way. Yeah, he's got the bunker coming down here. 
Well, I think that, he's kind of the he's timing like, of this. This already looks a little bit weird from the Terran side. Well, this is, I think initially he was going to go for the three, uh, three bunker, bunker play wall. at top yeah, of the yeah. ramp. But when you see that the hatchery's all done, you suddenly know, uh-oh, he got a spawning pool first. So he's looking. He's like, do you have Zerglings? What's going on here? He does add that second bunker, though. Okay, the hatchery has finished. And the third bunker is going down. Now, this actually creates a wall where nothing can get out unless mm -hmm. you killed one of the bunkers, which gives you a good amount of control. Kind of puts the Zerg in a headlock, if yeah. you will. But we have Roaches coming out here, and um, immediately Rogue is going to have an answer mm. to this. So I'm very curious to see how this pans out. Well, certainly the hatchery will be going down. Uh, I think he's going to just try to get as many larvae as he can out of here, produce whatever he can from this hatchery, maybe throw down like a, a creep tumor or something. But I'd be very surprised if he can break through. Okay, he's going to go ahead and try to take out these SCVs, but of course they can retreat very easily behind the wall, and one bunker being salvaged, the Marine does hop into the bunker adjacent to that. Two more Marines to enter in here. I see he's trying to repair. Looks like that second bunker will be going down as well. Yeah, but the hatchery ends up falling right here, and it looks like he still has quite a few roaches left over, so certainly we're going to see a counterattack coming across. Now this bunker is actually blocking the path in. It's going to take a little bit for these roaches to go across the map because of that. Yeah, that's a very important point point that you uh, made, Artos, is that actually also acts as a wall, so they set up very intentional. But Rogue is heading up here. There's, is there any attacking units there? I don't see anything. No, right? he has like two yeah. Marines coming back, which are hitting this Overlord. Okay, uh, I he think he has there. a single Hellion, uh, maybe? Oh, he's got to get up there. Oh, oh. my god. Oh, that would have been yeah. terrible. They almost turned around there for a second. Okay, so yeah. he's got the bunker up. Um, still, though, Ravagers are being made. Mm -hmm. And we have both barracks, by the way, headed back home. Uh-oh, this is going to be hard for TY to hold. Let's see if he can do it. Coming up, getting ready to prepare this reactor as it finishes up, but it is too late, and he breaks it down immediately, getting in on top of these SCVs. More SCVs being pulled up. He has to hold this bunker. And that's it, GG. Rogue takes game two, shutting down the rush. All right. Rogue with a very strong counterattack play there, immediately wiping through the defenses of a very aggressive TY in game two. Beautifully done there. I got to say, I don't think we're going to see TY try that again. You know, only Mario yeah. is the player who really seems to do all those rushes and make it work no matter what. But it makes sense for TY to try to bring that out in game two. Do the opposite of a macro game. But Rogue well, looking very scary. Well, the thing is, Tasteless, uh, you know, Rogue kind of predicted this coming, right? He went for a pool first play. And when you see that, suddenly the counterattack can come out very quickly. The defense of your hatchery can come out a little bit more quickly as well. And yeah, you lost that. But how many Marines were sacrificed to kill that hatchery? Quite a bit. So a lot of that did come down to just the initial opening. Uh, you make an excellent point, Artosis. It wasn't just that he held that. It's that he basically predicted the build that TY was going to do and already had a trump card there to deny it. So now we're tied up 1-1 mm -hmm. in this best of five. We're going to go into game three. And we've already seen really, really different plays from both of these guys. Yeah, we certainly have. And uh, the mind games certainly will continue as well. You know, the greedy play and then the rushing play. Where does TY go next? Or do we see Rogue mix it up? Does he try something aggressive in game three? We're going to find out as we now move into game three. It has loaded up. This is TY versus Rogue right now, tied up 1-1. One, one. Introducing our first players. Spawning here in the upper right, in the blue. Make some noise for T.Y. He was the world champion last year, and he's here to do it again. In the red, give it up for Rogue. Blue shift will be our map, and once again, we have T.Y. going oh, wow. for that hyper-aggressive play. Okay. Oh, my God, he's going to get the pool right away, yeah, too. Yeah, the okay. mind games here are actually, I mean, game one, sure, T.Y. got away with that very quick third command center, but two games in a row now, Rogue has correctly predicted, or maybe luckily predicted, that there was going to be these barracks first plays and to get the pool before your hatchery is so powerful against them. This is so crazy because, you know, with, in theory, but also even if you look at the probability, usually in a best of five or a best of seven, a cheese is going to work once, right? 
Sure. Now, this could be the second time a cheese build gets shut down immediately. And when you think of how good of a player TY is in all these different ways, mm -hmm. the fact that he rolled the dice again and tried to do um, another gambly play, yeah. and it could get completely crushed, this is going to be tough if TY can't survive this. No, you are certainly right about that, especially since four lings are being made right off the bat. A queen on the way as well. Sure, TY is making his Marines, but it's not going to be a free kill on this hatchery. There's definitely going to be a bit of a micro battle coming up. Okay, here come those SCVs now. It's the same build you guys saw before. It's the three SCVs that you, you can't, mm -hmm. I believe, quite make a full wall no matter how you do it no. here. <laughs> so this time around, Rogue has a different answer because it's not, you can't be blocked with three bunkers. So he's sending Lings and drones right up here, and he's going to try to actually oh, fight this at the source. Oh, great micro here by Rogue, getting up on top of these Marines, trying to get a surround off. More drones coming in. The Lings dealing huge amounts of damage. TY microing his heart out, but is he going to be able to keep some Marines alive? Okay. Okay, he's driven that back. Now these drones are going to go over and start mining from that hatchery that's finished up. The Lings have surrounded the bunker. I don't believe this SCV can repair this in time. Oh, maybe I spoke too soon. The Marines are going to come forward here. The drones have to block that path off. Oh, the SCVs microing perfectly here as well, but the drones trying to drill through, trying to get on top of these Marines. But as more Marines come in, Rogue has to be very careful. Okay, the bunker's being salvaged, and this really takes the wind out of the mm. sails of that rush. We see the army retreating back home. Again, these barracks are sort of in the middle of the map, these links. Uh, the link speed's about to finish, and, and it's not just that they're faster units, they're just overall stronger mm -hmm. when you have link speed. You get surrounds there, they get to fight more quickly, and they're gonna be able to cut off oh, these Marines at the pass. Oh no, this is the worst case scenario for TY. Those Marines are gonna have to get out of here, but there's enough links to get in and surround them. He completely surrounds these Marines. There's no way they're gonna be uh, uh, able to get back home. And if we can just get a shot over here at the entrance of TY's base already, these oh. links are trying to break in. Okay, he's trying to make a bigger wall here. He's bringing down some SCVs as well, just buying as much time as he can. When this Hellion pops out, it may be able to hold on for him. Okay, the bunk, excuse me, the depot is getting so low. He's continuing to try to break in here. SCVs trying to repair. The Hellion barely gets out and chases those Lings away. Oh, man, and at the end of the day, TY holds on against Rogue's counterattack. So I guess that's good for TY, but his rush failed dramatically. Here comes the third hatchery. Now, Rogue is definitely happy with the way this game has gone. Yes. Um, you have to remember, when those barracks have to fly all the way back home, they're not producing anything while they're in the air. Mm -hmm. So TY's already been slowed down. He has a, a second command center that he can't land uh, where he wants to make his second base, where on the other side of the map, Rogue is completely comfortable. He's he's growing and developing at a very quick pace, just now throwing down mm -hmm. his Roach Warren. He's what? He's got 32 workers to the 24 of TY. I'm really liking this game for Rogue. Yeah, it really looks fantastic. And this is where TY has to get really brainy and creative creative with how he wants to come back into this game. He's making some Hellions, he's getting a Raven, making a few Marines here and there. I mean, that stuff's all nice and good, but how are you going to hold on against a Zerg with way more workers? The third hatchery already going down, Roach tech out, so you can't even really do damage to him. What is the plan from TY? Well, you know, TY can try to rely on you know his very gifted tactical moves that he's had in, in mid-game, but you're right, Artosis. When you look at the numbers game, it just seems like Rogue is going to have a lot more muscle no matter how you cut it. Mm -hmm. um, the second base has been set up here. We've got a Raven on the way. Rogue has vastly outgrown TY at this point in time. So at th from here, TY basically has to respect that Rogue owns the map. He's going to have to try to assemble an army, mm -hmm. start trying to harass, and Rogue is completely and totally capitalizing on this situation. He, he really is. And look at this. He's actually making quite a few roaches. So we could see a massive counterattack here against TY. It's gonna be hard for him to hold on, but you know what? If he gets a couple bunkers up, gets his siege tanks in place, it's not undoable. What is your take on, on Rogue going for this? Because this does kind of remind me a little bit of game one. The fact that he is gonna get mm. the Roaches and the Ravagers, the fact that he does want to pick a fight, the fact that there's a Queen coming with this, which tells me that he is very, very, very committed to this. A game where I think Rogue could have actually dragged out yeah. and won in an Econ game. He's made a split decision to try to come in here with a jaw-breaking move. Well, it doesn't matter what I think. It matters that TY left with half of his units. Only a handful of Marines left. These will not be able to hold. And Rogue looks like he might be able to march to an early victory once again. TY completely caught off guard. The Wallen, he cannot get that set up over here. The Zerg army's gonna spill in, and this means these tanks will be going down as well. The SCB's coming up to fight as well. The Siege tank will get picked off, and GG 
is called Rogue, the defending world champion, goes up two to one. Beautifully done there by Rogue in what's already been a very strange series. TY with a proxy rax, double proxy rax, twice in a row. Both times, Rogue completely and totally shuts it down. I cannot imagine we're going to see TY try this a third time. It's hard to imagine, but maybe that's exactly why he does it. I don't know, but I tell you, Rogue with these pool first builds has to be feeling on top of the world right now. He just needs one more win to go on to the round of four. Rogue looking so strong, so solid here. TY, a player who is so good in the late game, in the mid game, has opted for these rust strategies that have just not worked out. We'll be going to game four in a little bit, but first a short break. Don't go away, we'll be right back. The 2018 StarCraft II World Championship Series Global Finals are brought to you in part by Republic of Gamers, Corsair, T-Mobile, Samsung SSD, and NVIDIA.
And we are back and getting ready to go into game four, TY versus Rogue. Right now, Rogue with a 2-1 lead. And this has been a really interesting best of five because we've had TY twice elect to go for double barracks in the middle of the map rush. And twice it has been completely hard countered by the opening that Rogue did. That's right. And at this point, the mind games are just even deeper. It's like, do you do you go for that again? Do you play defensively once again as Rogue and maybe let TY run away with the game if he's greedy? It's really hard to say how these guys are going to go into map four. Yeah, I'm really curious to see the openings this time around, guys. Let's get hype. Let's make some noise. We're going into game four now. Introducing our first player in the blue, our Terran. He is T.Y. And his opponent down here in the bottom left in the red, our Serg. He is Rogue! And guess what we have here? Not exactly the same, but close enough that it's very interesting. It is a quick proxy barracks, but not too quick proxy barracks. This is funny, because if TY loses in game three, he's really going to be regretting the flight home back to Korea, because this is, you know, for a player that is so talented and so good, at late game, he might, <laughs> he's not going to be able to do that mm. if he gets shut down. Hold on, is, oh, vision check, this is not catch the, no, yeah, that does not, not catch quite. it, right? Okay, the trajectory of the Overlord is just up and enough that it will not spot that. Mm -hmm. Now, let's also keep in mind that a lot of what TY is doing is what we've seen Maru do, but when Maru does it, he basically always wins. But when TY does it, he doesn't seem to have that extra, that X factor, I guess you could say, that allows him well, to pull it off. If he did, maybe he'd have three GSL Code S titles this year, but he doesn't, does he? <laughs> no. Uh, now, this is, it's just, it's so cool because he did two double proxy barracks. So as soon as you see this SCV kind of coming in from a funny location, you might be thinking to yourself, uh-oh, am I going to get bunker rushed once again? But I mean, even if he does, it's just going to be a Reaper in there. So here we go again. The bunker is coming down. Now, even though a lot of this rush it, it, to the layman, this may look like it's the same thing as we saw in game two and three. It's not. Uh, this is a much more modest attack. He's going to try to rush in here, but he's expanding behind it. So if this doesn't work, the, the rush itself, it's not the end of the world no. for the Terran. I, and I mean, he's just looking for a few drones, because look at this. A huge amount of drones got pulled there. He pulled almost every drone. So some good loss mining time already caused. But of course, as soon as he sees the Reaper, he realizes this is not as serious as he at first thought. Yeah, again, a, a lot of this build is a, a rooted in the fact that he did a rush in game two and game yes. three. You saw those drones get pulled because Rogue immediately thought, oh God, here we go again. I better send all my drones back out and try to fight. Well, the Reaper doing some nice fancy micro at the moment. Of course, when the Queens pop out, it becomes a lot harder to make this Reaper work. That bunker, not likely to be used too much. He'll probably just sell it momentarily here. Some good micro coming out from Rogue, no doubt though. Okay, we have the Reaper. Uh, it's gonna be bouncing out of here in just a little bit. And this game is going to now pick up in, in a more normal fashion. Yeah. The barracks is going to be sent back home. We do have, I believe, a third command center already being made here. Oh, you're and, right, yeah. And, and um, remember, he did win game one where he went for the three command center play. Mm -hmm. um, and note that the Reaper, as long as he doesn't lose this, this keeps the Zerg army pinned inside of the base. Because yeah. if the Zerg army leaves and the Reaper goes back in and starts killing workers again. Well, and you know, once you have speed, you can kind of deal with the Reaper a lot more quickly. You can't be as aggressive as he's been, but this has kept Rogue pretty busy. I, I got to tell you, I, I like the mixture that we see TY using so far this series, right? He does the triple command game one, like you mentioned, proxy barracks, now three games in a row, but this is actually like, a proxy barracks that covers the fact that he's playing greedily once again. Yeah, I, I like this a lot more because, again, this is going to allow TY to do and exhibit what he is so well known for, is, is getting, especially in the mid game, uh, having some good engages there. And it's not entirely hinged on closing the game out in the first few minutes. Now, uh, the question is also, how much of a read, whoa, hold on. I was about to say how much of a read does Rogue have on <laughs> what TY is doing, but as I was saying that, the Ling actually got inside the main base. So now Rogue knows exactly what's going on here for TY. He knows everything in the whole world right now. And that's uh, actually a pretty big mistake there by TY. Yeah, you, you don't want the free scout coming in. If your opponent's gonna scout, you make him sacrifice an Overlord or something like that. But the fact that the Ling got in is really, really nice for Rogue. That doesn't mean though that he can just go kill TY. Once you scout something, a lot of times, 
it's already too late to hard counter it, what you do is you adjust your build. You say, oh, three command stars this quick. Okay, no big attack is coming anytime soon. Maybe I can play more greedy. Exactly. So both these guys are in a race to try to develop and tech up as much as possible. Now, we do see a Raven's about to pop out here. Stim has just started. Realistically, there's not going to be any major attacks here from TY until Stim is done. It's just too yeah. strong of an upgrade to try to do anything with your infantry before that's finished. Yeah, you're, you're very right. When you get that stim upgrade done, sometimes you can go around, push back creep a little bit, maybe a little bit of drop harassment as well. But the big attack that we generally see is going to be when 2-2 finishes for TY. If you're going for a three command center play, that is going to be the most powerful unit in the game for you. Okay, so we have some of these Hellions coming here. This is really more to put some pressure on here. Nice transfuse. Uh, Rogue keeping those queens alive. Stim about halfway done. Now, with that pressure from those Hellions and basically just keeping Rogue honest, mm -hmm. TY is going to be very comfortable taking a third base of his own. Yeah, and you can see that Rogue is actually reacting to this in a way that I really like, to be honest. He's making a ton of drones right now. His drum count is going huge. Look at that, 70 workers taking his fourth base, getting his upgrades going. This is some nice counterplay to the greedy play he's seen from TY. Now, I do want to see if Rogue is ever going to commit to Roach Ravenger Ling here because that's what happened mm. in game one, and that did not serve him well. I don't believe he's going to go down that road. It seems like the roaches that he has now yeah. are just like a, a precaution. Yeah. It's like a deterrent so that you can't really do any more damage. I'm expecting a rogue to play a little bit more of a standard game, but as I'm saying that, I've seen 16 more lings being made right now. Yeah, this could be defensive, though. It's it's a possibility, right? Oh, well, that's even more lings. It's, it's starting to look more and more aggressive. You're definitely right about that. Maybe it's that wide open third base. Maybe he's expecting for TY to really commit with these aliens. Either Ooh, way. Good scan. Ooh, yeah, that's a fantastic scan. When you see scan. the Ravagers making that telegraph that the attack is actually about to happen here. Um, and it's also possible, Artosis, that Rogue just has this math mathed out perfectly. Mm -hmm. And he knows that he can basically get in here and do some damage. We're going to find out if that's the case when this attack starts. Well, there's something cool about this as well. As soon as you start seeing some Ravagers and you see Ling Bane and all this, as TY, you're saying, okay, more and more Seed Shanks. I'll keep making those. But there's actually a Spire on the way from Rogue, and it's not as popular to go for Middleist, but that can be a very powerful counter to this because you're so mobile. Yeah, and a lot of times what you're doing with a combination of units like this, especially with uh, Mutalisks and Banelings, is you actually want to take a fight because if the engagement goes well, uh, you trade pretty perfectly. And by the way, uh, the oh. fact that that tank did not die is pretty huge. Yeah. I mean, when you consider how many Lings were killed off there, Taking out one or two tanks like that, it negates that splash damage that comes in later on. Now look at this, a bunch of Marines coming up, going after Evolution Chamber, and oh my god, he gets it, but just Whoa. after plus one Carapace finishes, a very clutch finish there by Rogue. Yeah, when um, when TY actually identifies that he missed uh, denying that upgrade, he's going to be very frustrated with himself, because yeah. that was a fraction of a second mm -hmm. uh, for how close that was. Now the drop's coming in here, but again, this is to draw the Zerg's attention away. Meanwhile, over here, the real attack is coming. Yeah, that's a lot of Hellbats, so it's definitely scary, but with the Mutalisks coming out, he can snipe some of these Siege Shanks if he's out of position at all. Now here TY goes, we see his first person pushing into that fourth base quickly. He knows that there's going to be a lot of Banelings here. He has to be ready. The Mutas tried to come in there and take out the tanks. He goes back. He's going to macro for just a little bit, but he wants to try to lead in and take this expansion out. Now, can he kill that fourth base? It is such an important moment. If he can get it, that is a huge lead. Microing back right now. The Ling Bane being very careful. It doesn't want to be wasted. A huge group of Marines in the back coming up, stimming into the Mutas as well. It looks like he might be able to push forward even further here. This hatchery right now at about, about half health. The Mutas coming forward, though. A good Baneling connected suddenly. There's not enough Marines. Oh, but more Marines continue to rally forward. He has Seed Shanks in the back to run to defensively, and he picks off that fourth base. A wonderful push, beautifully executed by TY. A TY finished what he wanted to do. He denied that third base. I don't know if he wants to pack up and go home and wait for the Zerg to expand again. That's a, a much easier way to handle this, is to make it the Zerg's mm. problem, or maybe he wants to push even further forward. It's it's a good question. I, you know, I wouldn't mind him backing up a little bit. He's got 2-2, two, two, pretty close to finish. And once that's done and he's adding in these Widow Mines and everything, that's going to be a fantastic unit composition and a wonderful time to move out again. We really want to watch and make sure that these Mutas continue to grow, because if mm. there's a really good engagement with the Terran, with Stim Marines, sometimes the Mutas just get vaporized. Yeah. And then you don't have any muscle with your army. 
No, the mutas are so important. You're definitely right about that. You can see him flying around. He's looking to pick off anything he possibly can. Oh, oh almost He's gonna... intercepts Medivacs. Yeah, th this is intended to try to kill the Medivacs as they're going back home, but it looks like TY might be able to escort the rest of his army back over here. He's going to come in here, do a little bit of damage mm -hmm. on the, by the way, fourth base. Right now, Rogue yeah. is on three bases, so Rogue is really getting painted into a corner here. No, it, it's a very tough position for him. He's going to be looking for a couple lucky fights coming up, but he's doing some decent harassment, at least with the Mutilus. This will keep TY busy for a bit, but eventually TY is going to be on the map once again with a superior army. Okay, the fourth base has now been made over here in the upper left corner of the map. Now, this is a location that Terran might not identify right away because it's it's kind of removed from everything else. Mm -hmm. But really, Rogue does need a solution, and, and very quickly. The Zerg is always supposed to be one base ahead of the opposing player. That's yeah. when the game's actually even. No, it's a, it's a good point to bring up. And with this 3-3 three, three on the way, that's that's like a death sentence. If you don't have the game one with Ling Bane Muta and 3-3 three, three finishes for the Terran, you're not killing anything anymore. Those Marines will plow through every unit you have. So the clock is on Rogue in more ways than one. Okay, a late counterattack is easily denied over here by TY. But uh, the Mutas are going to come in here. They're doing a little bit of damage now to that uh, that tank. Again, though, nothing major has actually been picked off mm. as TY is going to continue to advance in this position. Yeah, but hold on. These Mutas starting to pick off some of the siege tanks, dealing a little bit of damage. Looks like he just barely gets his volleys wrong there and leaves two of them alive. In the meantime, this fourth base of Rogue under fire from TY. Okay, he's got this small army trying to push in here. Some Lings are going to come and try to wedge themselves in between the two armies. The Mutas come down here and take out the tanks. The hatchery does go down with a pickup. The rest of the army escapes. One thing we can say is all the tanks went down, but I don't think TY even cares. He's getting drilling claws right now. He's making a Thor to help force away those mutalisks as well. And look at this, two command centers on the way. TY is making his lead so much bigger. Again, he's wiped out another base. These drones are having to be rotated from expansion to expansion as he's trying to capitalize on the bases he gets. But every time TY is there to swat it back down. Now, Rogue is trying to get some more tricks out here. He's getting Flyer Care Pace. Maybe his Mutalist will continue to give him enough value that that will come into play. He's getting Burrow. Maybe we can see Burrowed Banelings kill a big chunk of TY's army, but I have the feeling it might be too little too late. And again, a lot of times you can lose a game by your opponent simply taking out each expansion you take. You don't have to go all the way and wipe out all their buildings. You just drown them out economically. Mm -hmm. Well, that's actually even more common than killing all their bases, yeah. to be honest. Rogue right now has to be feeling that as well. He has only his fourth base up. He continually is trying to expand, but TY is absolutely everywhere. Okay, TY is itching to try to attack in here again. Now, both players are maxed out, so their armies should be fairly even. But if you look at the minerals banked up here for TY, he's already at 2.6k. Mm -hmm. He's got a lot to remake. If he, if he loses any of his yeah, army, he can yeah. immediately remax out. It is the truth, but look at these Mutalists. It's such a nice sized flock. It's killing a bunch of these SCVs. It kills a command center as well. Another one on the way, but Rogue is not really gaining value anywhere else. These Mutas are coming in here, trying to do some more damage. Um, the Thor is here to try to help fight this. Oh my god, great control. So that, that Thor actually getting uh, one or two extra shots off. All the Mutalists very badly mm. bruised. Just monstrous Thor. Oh, is he actually to... stuck in here now? He looks it. Oh, yeah, with those mines going down. He has to be so careful trying to fly out. But, oh, another Thor here to catch them. Some nice volleys go off, but he actually gets away with most, and those mutas will heal up relatively quickly. So what Rogue's trying to do here is just keep the Terran occupied on his side of the map. Rogue is scrambling to try to get additional bases mm -hmm. up and running. Uh, and we see TY every time he tries to edge out here with these Marines, but there's Rogue to try to deny it. Oh, great harass there, mm -hmm. though. Five drones killed. Yeah, I love that TY is continually sending out little squads to do this harassment. He did draw the mutas back as well, which definitely is going to help him a bit to keep the pressure off himself. And now he's moving towards that top left base once again. Okay. TY is going to try to come up here once again and punch out this base in the top left. Now, the creep is being pushed back. Rogue is definitely aware of this. I don't see where Rogue's setup is to try to engage this. Okay, he's got uh. Mutas headed up here. 
Very good. He's got a nice surround. I don't know if this is a good idea for TY to try to come in. It seems like Rogue is really ready. Yeah, yeah. He's got pretty decent creep spread. It looks like TY might be waiting for a little bit of that to go back that he had just cleared. Uh, but he's bringing more units up as well. Look at this. This flock of mutas still so dangerous if it runs into small reinforcements. By the way, there is another expansion being taken at the very bottom here in case this one is wiped out. So Rogue already has an insurance policy on this. Here comes TY trying to push in. Now he's coming in with a very small amount of his army because he's hoping he can fish some of that army back over to where the rest of the defenses are. He doesn't want to overcommit. No, but look at that. This hatcher getting very low. Rogue has decided that he is going to engage. Tons of banelings rolling through right now. And it looks like the hatchery still falls, but he clears a big chunk of the army. Yeah, um, he's coming here once again. I'm sorry, did the hatchery actually get taken out? I believe it's still there. Oh, no, it was destroyed, and he's going to be remaking it right now. Again, Rogue down here at the bottom with another hatchery that's going to finish. And as the game goes further and further on, you'll notice the Zerg has mm. to expand farther and farther out of the map, and that's really what TY's banking on here in this late game, sure. is that the Zerg, in some sense, is expanding towards the Terran, which makes the Terran's job easier to come out there and smash those bases. Mm -hmm. Now, this is getting a little bit interesting with Rogue and his tech choices here. He's into Hive Tech finally. He canceled his plus two Flyer Care Pace, and instead, it looks like he's going to go into Broodlords, which can do very well against just Marine Marauder Mine. Oh, they certainly can. By the way, these mutas are coming in here now, taking out that turret. Nothing here to defend. Another link counter attack. Basically, all of TY's army is actually down on the bottom of the map trying to take out that new expansion. Oh my gosh, these Banelings rolling in, but great micro by TY. He keeps his Marines away from them. The Marauders eat a lot of hits. I can't believe what Rogue has been able to scrap together. These Mutas have been out of control. Okay, this expansion goes down as well, and Rogue is really beginning to dry up economically. Looks like TY wants to push even further forward here. This is the last base that Rogue has. Yeah, he's got to try to keep this one alive for sure. You're right about that. The Banelings rolling in. The Marauders slowing them down so much that some of them do connect, but still enough left that that hatchery is under danger. And even though these mutas have done so much damage, if this hatchery is taken out, there's really not much oh. left but a beautiful save there by Rogue. Rogue, I don't know how he's doing this right now, rubbing together two nickels to make a quarter. He has that fourth base still up. His tech continues to go forward. Four Vipers on the way, three Broodlords on the way and those mutalists are still alive he's doing a great job taking out some of these medevacs that are on the map you notice supplies now 150 to 144 mineral count very very low uh, the next few bases are going to be key here because mm. uh, we see that rogue is taken uh, once more the upper left he's mining from that it doesn't seem like oh excuse me ty is actually already pushing out now <laughs> Yeah, he's coming for him once again. TY is not going to let up. He is on 3-3 with plus 2 on these Thors. That is massive as far as upgrades. He scans, he sees the Broodlords. Now, does he try to pull back and get better anti-Broodlord tech? Yeah, we're going to have to find out. The Marines are coming forward here. You can see Rogue is really leaning on counterattacking as his main tool for survival. He mm -hmm. wants to try to draw the game back out. Now, when you see Broodlords used, one thing about them is even though they're very scary and they do a lot of damage, they're pretty slow. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times you'll see people respond to that by actually playing around the Broodlords. They'll just attack wherever the Broodlords are not. And I'm wondering if that's what TY is going to do yeah. this time around. Well, the Broodlords now, they're trying to go to the north because he sees TY going up there. But at the exact same time, TY scans and runs into the south. It looks like he wants to hit this base once again. OK, another attack happening down here at the bottom. And again, TY hitting in the upper left both these expansions are under a real threat oh those vipers coming he cannot be losing those ty dropping into the main base that's really far away from everything rogue under attack on all sides even another attack towards his third it looks like rogue may be close to crumbling here three different locations are being hit he comes in takes out the infestation pit units and links here to try to help defend oh some beautiful baneling connections a few marauders do end up living but everything very badly damaged rogue trying to hold on for the first time in forever he takes that supply lead as well okay he's picking Picking up everything else and going back home. Um, not much left over here for Terran. Rogue still relying on this one base at the bottom center of the map. This is the most important base in the game right now. It's mostly been tempo-wise, TY coming out and doing a lot of damage um, and just keeping Rogue occupied. There's also a base up here. Terran's not supposed to be able to get this base, by the way. This is, <laughs> this is pretty tricky yeah. to actually hold, but it seems like Rogue is given so many tasks he has to juggle. He hasn't been able to go over there and, and, and devote some of his attention, mm -hmm. some of his army to that location. Well, this has been kind of a wild 
wild, one-of-a-kind game that we've been watching. Rogue is the one that's trying to be really cost-efficient. The Mutas, once again, coming in and showing their value, harassing the space, keeping TY busy, and he's expanding again as well. Okay, another drop over here. I don't know if we're going to see if that connects. I imagine it did since Rogue didn't go back. There it is. Some more hits on those workers. The Mutas, the main tool he's using to try to wipe out any other aggression here. Again, Rogue is building up more and more and more Broodlords, and eventually he's going to have an army that's going to be really hard to face off head-to-head -head here for TY. Yeah, especially with those Vipers mixed in. Right now, TY is trying to bludgeon his way through. He's adding some Vikings and things like that, but we haven't seen a Ghost yet. It's going to be hard without any EMPs without any snipes to take down these massive flying units. Again, Rogue here being hyper vigilant, looking for any opening here, any moment that TY would try to push out. If he can take out any of those medevacs with units in them as he's trying to drop, it's a big win. Um, and as the game has slowed down, at least for a little bit here, uh, it looks like Rogue's going to try to take yet another expansion, the one adjacent to the one he already has here in the bottom of the map. Oh, some Banelings rolling in, trying to hurt this economy of TY. He gets up and, I mean, still loses a decent chunk there. But look at this, the Mutas on a suicide mission. They do have to turn around. The Mutas have been chased away, but here comes that attack here from TY. I don't see anything here to defend from Rogan. It looks like this hatchery will go down. He still has that mining base right above here, though. Another counterattack. These two are just bleeding each other dry right now. <laughs> it is just crazy. Hard to say who's in the lead. We're already over 20 minutes in this game. Can we do a quick mineral check on the, at the expansions? Where they're actually... So that's almost mined out. Mm -hmm. That's completely mined out. And he's going to have to it's be reliant, basically. Yeah, getting low. And then he has that. But for Zerg... Okay, that's so, about it. <laughs> yeah, th th this is going to be disappearing very quickly. So really, R Rogue has to control the bottom of the map. Yeah, he, this is getting more and more important. And look Whoa. at that 28 SCVs killed. But, well, that's a few mules dropping from the sky, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, as this game goes on, Keep in mind, if this base we're seeing here from TY, he really doesn't get any other bases on the map. It's pretty hard for Terran to actually hold outposts really far away from mm -hmm. the starting location of the Terran, but he's making it work. Now, Rogue, for a long time, he's been uh, massing up these Broodlords, and he's hoping yeah. to eventually have this army that you cannot stop, that you cannot sandbag, and it will progress and possibly wipe TY out. What TY wants to do is continue to try to poke out these bases. Yeah. And he may be trying to do a lot more counterattacks. I know we've seen mostly Rogue relying on that, but it might be TY's turn to try that instead. Yeah, you could be right. The Mutas continue to do a great job with that, but, uh, you know, TY is starting to realize that the game is shifting. He's finally made a Ghost Academy. I saw a couple Cyclones, which was kind of interesting. Wonder what he's going to end up doing with that. This this might just be to kill a hatchery. If you have plus two vehicle weapons like he has, you can just kind of right click and kill a building pretty quickly. Oh, so absolutely. Hey, Ty, he's he's getting clever here. He's trying to mix it up with his harassment while he gets into those ghosts, which are so important against a Broodlord army. Now, nobody really has an edge here. I want to emphasize that because this game has been so back and forth. But for now, it seems like. Again, Zerk got his expansions up. TY's got his. The game could have been in earlier had anybody fully succeeded on that. Oh. Uh, and a nice little attack in here. It looks like Rogue's going to try to come in here and snipe this command center. Yeah, some great parasitic bombs going down. A lot of damage done in this air army. The Mutas fly back in with anti-armor missiles on them. And the Lings continue to fight through. Oh my god, just a brutal fights on both sides. Now, Rogue did spend the rest of the minerals and gas yet banked up. TY still sitting on over a grand as far as minerals go. Um, I'm a little bit surprised by that attack. That definitely didn't do anything. When you see the two planetaries like that, you got to know it's not going to work. Well, Rogue is still trying to deal some damage here while he builds up that army, but a fusion core coming up, more and more ghosts popping out. Those ghosts are just about the most cost-efficient things in this matchup. If TY gets into a long war of attrition, which this already kind of is, and starts hitting a lot of snipes, that's where you are just losing units almost for free as Rogue. By the way, the only expansions that haven't been taken now are the top left and the bottom right. We're actually running out of resources on the entire map. I don't know if we're going to go to that point, but it's something worth noting because mm -hmm. eventually they, they will have gobbled up everything and it's just what you see is what you get. Yeah. And another attack coming up here. Getting rid of some of the missile turrets. Even that is very valuable considering how many flying units he has and the harassment that he's been able to do. But the ghosts continue to be pumped out. As the game goes on, we see a small army here in the top left side of the map. Looks like he's just trying to control this position so no mm -hmm. drone can get there. 
I love these burrowed lings right now as well. He knows that a lot of mules are being dropped, a lot of scans are being used for scouting. The multitasking everywhere is intense. TY probably isn't even aware of all the lings that are burrowed around, which means the next time he sees TY's attention somewhere, you unburrow some of those and they're gonna get massive damage. Rogue is continuing to get more and more and more Broodlords here. Um, and he may actually be trying to come up here and attack at the top. And we actually have nukes coming into play here, by the oh. way, as well for TY. Well, this right now, Tazos, I think, is the game of the tournament thus far. Of course we're going to have nukes. And by the way, Rogue has actually spotted <laughs> it. Those broad links popped up. Yeah. He's trying to take that out. That will be denied. Now, we don't always get to see nukes in, in StarCraft 2, but when we do it, it's pretty cool. And the way they're utilized is generally not to simply try to surprise your opponent because he mm. can't find the nuke. A lot of times you see nukes used to try to control the no man's land in between the mm. two armies so that it, it, it disincentivizes the other player from trying to engage forward because the nuke could end up hitting them. And a lot yeah. of times they get canceled before they land. Uh, you can know when the map is that big, occasionally we will see a ghost sneak through some location, target a nuke somewhere, mm. and the other Zerg player can't find it, and it actually hits and kills a lot of stuff. Yeah, I'm excited to see what he ends up doing with those nukes. He's got a couple of them ready right now. He's got a lot of ghosts, just kind of filling out his composition. Both sides have just about maxed out once again. I, I don't blame TY for trying. He is going to come up here to the top left and take this base. <laughs> and I'm curious to see how Rogue's going to react to this, because even though Zerg is known for being very mobile and he can be aggressive, Broodlords are the exception to that. Mm. Yeah, it's a very slow-moving army. And now TY, he's just kind of cutting up some parts of the map. And this is really useful, even though, for instance, this base isn't being used. If he can get rid of the creep, it's fantastic. Well, hold on! Coming in right now is Rogue. He wants to clear this, and he will. He takes out the rest of that army. TY will have to back off. I'm curious to see if there's going to be another counterattack here to the top left. Um, can we get a shot of where the Broodlords are? I'm not sure. Okay, there they are. So they're continuing to roam around here. Uh, and right now they're being used more defensively mm -hmm. than, than offensively. I think Rogue is concerned if he tries to do an offensive play, TY will stim, pick up, and then move to different locations of the map and pop off hatcheries everywhere. Now look at this. This is a part of the game that, in my opinion, TY is the absolute best at in the world. These positional plays with Liberators and Ghosts, we got he a nuke. is fantastic at moving around and doing little pushes like this. Okay, now again, Rogue has to scramble to try to figure out where this mm. nuke is. He doesn't see it. Now, no. not that there's too much over here, but this is going to start getting very annoying. But keep in mind, that as you continue to make nukes, that does cost resources, that does cost yeah. supplies, so this can really start to hurt you in the long run. Okay, well, so some units coming up and clearing this out. Another nice harassment from his opponent there, uh, but more nukes, and this is another great thing that they can do. You start hitting some of these static defenses, and that means that you're just gonna walk forward, but it looks like Rogue able to eliminate that ghost before the nuke can land. More scans coming here, and TY, honestly, if you look at the minimap, he looks like he's the Zerk player. <laughs> he's now got a base at the bottom right, too, so yeah. I don't know if he can sustain this, but so far it's working. And, he, I mean, he continues to harass everywhere as well. Look at this. Once again, coming in, trying to get that hatchery. Again, this area is a little bit important. It helps with the creep. It helps with the defense and attacks up towards that top left that's very important to TY right now. Yeah, I mean, so far, so good. He's really making this work. He's slowly making small jabs here at Rogue, and it's been getting to pile up. Rogue is getting more and more squished into the bottom left corner of the map. And look at that. He comes in with these kings the moment those Broodlords get out of position for a moment and does some decent damage to them, but Rogue very adeptly keeps them alive. So as we're getting to the half-hour marker here, TY's gotten into a pretty impressive position. He has more bases than the Zerg, and this really puts the burden on the Zerg. The Zerg now has to figure out how to get out and actually do mm. something, because frankly, TY could just stay back and continuously fire nukes, uh, and there's not much that Rogue yeah. can do. As long as he keeps those bases mining, he can continue to push forward and clear these areas. Now this nuke looks like it should end up landing. This is a huge no man's land. Doesn't really kill that much, gets Creep Tumor, does some damage. And, you know, you look at it and you say, well, that wasn't efficient, but he is gaining ground, and that is very important here. Another nuke is fired off here. Looks like Rogue is finally ready to try to strike back. He's pushing forward oh. with so many Banelings. The, the Ghost still on the run over here. Such an important moment. Those Banelings starting to connect. A beautiful play coming out of Rogue while he continues to march forward. So few Ghosts left to deal with these Broodlords. 
And as these Broodlords come in, there's no way that TY's bottom right base won't be entirely annihilated. But a small counterattack going into the main. There's so much that can be destroyed in here, and there's no easy way to get those Broodlords back home. Definitely a big moment. Does he continue his attack, or does he turn around? That bio in his main could eliminate a huge chunk of his tech. Okay, great play here. That small drop going uncontested, but Rogue slowly is moving up. And I do not know if the Terran has a solution to address this massive fleet of Broodlords. Well, he's gonna have to get one because they are on their way to his main base. Another ghost coming out. Looks like he tries to get a snipe. It does not end up working out. This is very tough indeed, but TY's offensive force continues to clear bases here of Rogue. And TY is... is basically wiping out everything back at home for Rogue, but how do you stop this army here? This Rogue army continues to move forward. It's about to get to the heart of where TY's production is, which means what TY has is all he's gonna have for a while now. Well, he's making a lot of Liberators. He's mixing in a Viking. He's getting a few Marines. He's getting some Ghosts. All these things hit air. If he can break this one final army, he can still win this game. Down goes the anti-armor missile, and here he goes. He's coming in right now. So much damage coming down on these corrupt there's the only thing that's going to actually protect oh. the Broodlords. And T.Y. fights back. Rogue is on the run. Just crazy play here by T.Y. He kills all of the Corruptors and the Liberators. Will clean up. GG. T.Y. brings it to game number five. Unbelievable. We are tied up right now. 2-2. Two -two. T.Y. really bending the rules of Terran as a race. I mean, you're not supposed to be able to get away with that. Taking both the upper left and the bottom right, controlling that. Rogue, finally, with that death ball of an army, pushes out. TY musters the forces to come back, break that army's nose, and close out the game. Well, I tell you what, they really showed their skills in that game. Rogue was so far behind, but fought back brilliantly with his Lings, his Banes, his Mutalists, got into that late game Broodlord tech. But that, again, is where T.Y. becomes so strong, his positional play. Those counter harassments he was doing with the bio really forced Rogue's hand. And at the end of the day, just barely able to break through his air defense. Let's keep in mind that game actually started out with T.Y. hiding one barracks on the map. <laughs> That's to, true. to make it look like he was doing the rush he did in game two and game three when really it was actually uh, masked really intelligently. He expanded behind that. Now, we're seeing why T.Y. is so strong in the late game. Rogue, the wins he's had have been through very decisive, aggressive plays. He basically stays back, he reads, he sees what T.Y. is doing, he shuts it down, then he looks for his own opener and goes for the jugular. Yeah, it, it, just a brilliant game from two brilliant players. Absolutely some of the best StarCraft we've seen all year long. And to go into game five from here between these two who were both in the top four last year, Rogue the defending world champion, it is anyone's guess as to who takes this series. So crazy. We're finally here in game number five. TY versus Rogue. This is it. Whatever the best TVZ, ZVT these guys have, they better bring it now, because one of these two players is about to be eliminated from the WCS Global Finals. Introducing our Terran player in the blue. Make some noise for T.Y. His opponent in the bottom right, in the red, the defending world champion. Give it up for Rogue! And here we go again. Okay. A proxy barracks out in the middle of the map, and it is a hatchery first play. Wow. Okay, double proxy oh. barracks. Now, you got to keep in mind the way that that last game looked. That game was, uh, I think it was over a half hour, if, mm -hmm. I, if my memory serves me correctly. And TY won it, but this time TY is going back to the strategy that failed twice Yes. in his best of five. He but says he's going to do it a third time now. There's always mind games with builds. Yeah. That's why we don't make the players play one game, and then we decide who's better. They have to play a series of games, so we get to see how many different strategies they have, how they operate on different maps. So this is like the ultimate mind game here from TY, to do the thing that failed twice already. Well, why did it fail, Tasteless? Big part of that reason is because Rogue went for his spawning pool before his hatchery. This game, he's done the more economic opening. He's trying to expand right off the bat. And that means that this initial rush, 
is going to be much harder for Rogue to hold on against. Now, Rogue knows this is a possibility, but might have discounted it because it just seems improb It seems illogical, mm -hmm. to be honest. And now he knows. The two SCVs telegraph that the rush is inbound, and we see Rogue immediately realizes <laughs> that this is unreal, that, that, that TY is going to do it yet again. And by the way, the opener, as you said, Artosis, is this is the way Rogue started this game out. It is not strong for this kind of rush. No, this is exactly what you want to hit as TY is getting these double bunkers up. In fact, it really looks like Rogue will not even try to save this hatchery. Now, that doesn't mean that the game is over. Absolutely not. We see he's taking the second gas. This means that very likely we're going to see him go into Ravagers and we're going to just see a very weird game from here. Yeah, there is a backup plan if you get your base shut down. It doesn't mean that Zerg uh, is doomed to lose this. Now, the third base being made up here, I don't believe... TY did not have vision of that, correct? So No, you are quite right so, about so that. So this also may, may throw TY off. And in fact, it's really good that he sent the SCV up and Rogue instantly made the second gas. That always means Ravagers, but as soon as the SCV left, he canceled the gas. So right now, TY will be preparing for a Ravager counterattack, which is never going to come. Exactly. The hatchery goes down. We still don't have TY scouting this third base. So even though Rogue was completely surprised by this rush, in a matter of seconds, he hammered together an image for TY that makes it look like he's taking the game in a direction it is, in fact, not going in. This is fantastic mind games from Rogue. Certainly, he's a little bit behind, but this is not an unwinnable situation. If he has this base up and he just goes into drones from here, TY might be defending. And if you're just sitting there defending, you're not getting your expansion up, and suddenly Rogue can get ahead. Okay, these links are coming out. A surprising number, I think, here for TY. The SCV will be taken out. And as this SCV retreats, mm. suddenly TY realizes he's in a very different game than what he had planned out. Yes, he, he has been duped, but again, to kill that initial hatchery, he did what he initially wanted to with his build order. So uh, this game, absolutely not over one way or the other. We're going to have to see how these two geniuses go from here. Okay, he's backed up. He is getting a command center here, although it's, it's, it's quite late. Now, this is already just a weird TBZ. The Zerg right now does have two bases, but it's, it's out in the middle of the map. Uh, this is all quite awkward. Um, and so eventually Rogue is going to try <laughs> to get a third base actually where you would normally get the second base, where yeah. we saw that hatchery killed off. There it is now. But I'm curious to see what kind of timing attack can TY try to come in here and do? Well. We see another mind game is exactly, of course, what we would be seeing between these two. The Lings went up and saw the tech lab, as you see there. What's he making? Oh, it's not a Banshee. Oh, no, 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 no. It's a Medivac. It looks like TY is going to go for something with a little bit more force behind it, not something technical. And if you're preparing for technical and not force, you're going to have a hard oh. time. You're going to lose some drones. Now, the Overlord just Ooh. saw that. Medivac, we have mm. to assume that TY did it. Sometimes it'll graze by the player's vision and they just don't catch it uh, because there's so much going on and adrenaline is a huge factor as well. But that is now moving out on the map. So we have a Zerg on two bases. It's, it's going to be a third base eventually, but it's not It's not kicked in yet. Okay. Uh, and this can do a lot of damage here, what TY is throwing it at Rogue's face. You are certainly right about that. There are a lot of drones out here that could get fried. He's going to show the Medivac towards the main base. This should draw units up there. And then the, oh my god, look at this. Those two queens trying to wait for this. Oh, oh here he goes, roasting the drones. He came into that beautiful angle there and nine drones were killed the hellions back out a big blow there for rogue who's already wobbling uh in this game and, and i think we got to see how the next few attacks uh, are when they come in mm -hmm. the whole idea here is when you kill their workers they have to remake the workers if they're making workers they're not making attacking units which means an inevitable push here from the terran oftentimes can oftentimes can win because the zerg was not able to assemble an army Man, this game, this series, it's just wild to see two players of this caliber, of this intelligence go against each other. And uh, the fact that it's been so back and forth, it's really hard to say exactly who's ahead, but you can see that Rogue now is playing a little bit more defensively. He's lost those drones. Sure, he's remade them, but he's making some roaches as well. 
Okay, another attack in here. Unfortunately, it does not kill anything off. TY, you could see how careful he was. He did not want to overextend. Every unit in a game like this is very important. Now, Stim is finishing right now. So that means that Terran can now move out on the map with infantry. So all those Hellion attacks that we saw earlier are generally speaking setting up for a moment where the Terran's going to come out with Marines, medevacs, tanks, and actually try to start uh, destroying structures, not mm. just workers. Well, the upgrades are a coming, and Rogue going for this massive Roach play once again. Very similar to game number one. He's getting the Roach upgrades and the Roach speed. He's going to get a gigantic army, and I, I feel like this game, it's a really smart play considering TY uh, kind of got hobbled early on. Yeah, he really did. Um, we're still waiting now. I mean, Rogue has really been forced to react here. He's got to be careful. That medevac is super low. Uh, you can just see how ambitious TY is being here because he doesn't even want to send that back to get it repaired. He wants to keep doing damage and putting pressure on. Mm. Uh, but eventually it seems like that will be sent back home. So right now, TY, it doesn't seem like he's thinking about taking a third base anytime soon. And that's definitely going to be a good choice against these Roaches. Is he going to move out for an attack now? It looks like he would, right? Um, he stayed back for quite a while now. I think he wants to maybe take out any spotters before he officially comes out. Mm. Uh, and somehow this Overseer is still <laughs> in the game, so this is quite annoying here uh, for, for Rogue. Mm -hmm. uh, for TY, excuse me. Um, but I believe this attack is going to be inbound in a moment. Okay, so a lot of this is going to come into position. Quite a few roaches, some ravagers on the way. The siege tanks are key here. The micro is key. He's even pulling a ton of SCVs. TY is going all in. This game is going to come down to this one moment. We see a few links counterattacking. Right now, Rogue is trying to get ready and assemble um, his army in such a Ooh. position that he can hold this counterattack. And the fact that, okay, here we go. It's too late. It's already starting up. The tanks are sieging up. The SCVs are in the front. Line. Oh, those vials go down. He's stimming forward right now. Rogue definitely microing his heart out right now, pulling back. He's got to keep this third base alive, but it looks like he won't. TY, as his, his hatchery is so low, it looks like it might be taken out. But as the attack comes in, more roaches and raptors trying to come in here and surround these tanks. So many Stimmerines continue to be microed. It's almost only just ravagers left. A lot of Biles have hit. The siege tank count is almost done for. And Rogue holds. Rogue beats back the army of TY. Beautifully done. But of course, Rogue is only on two bases. And in, in a game like this, the Zerg's supposed to be on three, the Terran's mm. supposed to be on two. I'm worried for Rogue that if TY goes back, makes another army and attacks it again, that Rogue will not have enough to hold it. You might be right about that, but the worker count of TY is so low, it's hard for him to produce a lot of units. Now, do you just try to harass heavily as TY while you try to rebuild this army? Well, I, I think he's going for what you suggested here, Tesla, is rallying units across the map. And this actually has to work here for TY. Now, Rogue, uh, he's hurting. He doesn't have everything in the world, but as you were mentioning, Artosis, when those SCVs are taken out, that's when it could become a huge problem. By the way, taking out the Roach Ward could oh. make things very interesting over here if he opts to deny that. Yeah. So now there's no more Roaches that can be made, <laughs> at least for the time being. Yeah, he's probably going to want to remake that Roach Ward pretty quickly here, I would imagine. Uh, he is retaking a third base in a different location. Doesn't have creep on the left-hand side there. And in fact, TY is aware of it coming in immediately and putting on some pressure. Now, in theory, all Rogue has to do is get a third base up, keep mining from it, and he should be okay. But what TY is doing is trying to pick fights here and there that he knows he can win, trying to take out little bits and pieces of the army because TY's next attack has to close it out. Yeah, I mean, he's getting a scary army once again. We have to hand it to him. <laughs> but Rogue is actually kind of pulling back into a little bit more of a macro game, isn't he? Just started his 2-2 upgrades. Now, the one thing I can tell you for sure is if those 2-2 upgrades end up finishing for Rogue, he's basically won the game at that point. Right. He's going to be so far ahead, three upgrades up, your Roaches are all going to be Superman against TY. Exactly. I mean, you're going to be able to eliminate uh, and win a fight just so easily because, you're, frankly, you're just so much stronger than your opponent. So I'm getting worried here for TY. And I think Rogue yeah. knows that all he has to do is sit back and wait. Because of the way TY's played this game, ultimately, it's TY's mm. problem for how to end the game. All Rogue has to do is drag this game out, stretch it out as much as he can. And Rogue should just have a better, mm. stronger army. Well, this is a lot of Ravagers being made, a ton of Roaches as well. TY continues to fly around with an empty medevac. He's kind of making a Rogue be in the wrong places at the wrong time. If TY can set up with these Siege Shanks, with the Liberators, and prevent the Biles from clearing his Siege tech, then he can still break Rogue. He can still win this game.
we see this army coming over here. I don't know that Rogue is aware that he's about to be hit from this angle. He comes in here. The siege tanks are set up. Uh, one is chipped off. TY going to try to edge in here, but he's pretty far away from that expansion. It's yeah. going to be pretty tough to try to edge in there. That's about one screen length away. Well, Liberator going to fly an uh-oh. Two queens completely ready to catch this Liberator. It's going to do absolutely no damage whatsoever. And I think from here, TY has decided, you know what? There is no way I will ever breakthrough here. He's backing up. His third command center is on the way. He's getting another engineering bay and an armory, but how do you go into a macro game against someone who's about to be up three upgrades? We see Rogue coming up here now. He's looking for an answer of his own. He's going to come up here, and this is going to force TY to get back. TY actually needs to come back here and try to defend. He picks up his tanks. He's going to throw them onto the high ground where they have a better position to try to fire down. Uh, meanwhile, can we get a shot at the bottom? There's something. There it is. There's another drop coming oh. down here. This is a really important moment right there. A huge road drive army, but he can't see those tanks on the high ground. He has a backup in TY. Somehow, oh. some way, he kills the third base of I Rogue. I can't believe he just did that. He actually took the base out. He is doing so much with so little. Uh, he's coming in here now. He's taking out these queens. We don't. We see the main army of Rogue oh. scrambling back home to try to clean this up. I think Rogue thought he had an opening to go in for the kill move, and TY exploited that. He came in there. He wiped out the base. And even though Rogue is almost double the supply, of TY. TY is showing he's still got a shot. <laughs> Look at that army supply difference. Todd is freaking out somewhere, man. TY is a literal magician to be in this game to somehow keep it in a competitive state because Rogue is just seemingly is so far ahead. So behind this, TY is going to try to stretch out. He wants to take a third base, but this is dangerous. Rogue has a serious army on the map. Yeah. But I think TY might, TY might have intimidated him enough to stay back and defending that TY can just eke out this expansion. Mm. I love this, just kind of dogging all of these yeah. Ravagers. He's killed so many queens, the anti-air is almost non-existent. Now, TY sees that there's burrow movement on these roaches. That is definitely an important thing to realize. And there are just a ridiculous amount of Ravagers. So he's spreading his tanks, he's getting ready. He knows no. an attack's coming. The tank positioning is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And he's actually got him set up in a pretty interesting formation. Now, Rogue's gonna hit from two angles. There's one here at the bottom that's gonna come up here as well. Uh, oh. He's coming in here now. The Biles have been fired out. And TY is hoping to, uh, uh, TY is gonna try to hold this, but Rogue may end up swapping him. Some very nice splits here by TY. A lot of Siege Shanks left alive, but so many Biles. This flank from Rogue is overwhelming, and it looks like that could be it. GG, Rogue has done it and he will advance the defending world champion with a great game five there. TY tried that same strategy three times and ultimately it was that build, that style of play that cost him the game. I think TY delivered one of the boldest mind games we've seen here in StarCraft II for a series like that, but Rogue was there to shut it down. Rogue showing his power, his, his staying ability in these games. Whether he's ahead or behind, he's making the choices that give him a chance to win the game. You can see how and intense that was. Man. He's actually grabbing his shoulder yeah. <laughs> for his mouse arm. He's going to go inside and shake TY's hand. And I got to say, that was an incredible Terran versus Zergartosis. Yeah, it, absolutely a killer series right there. And, you know, TY is out in the round of eight, but once again showing that he is one of the best Terrans ever in StarCraft II. And so Rogue advances and gets that much closer to becoming the two-time WCS Global Champion. We're going to throw it to Smix. Smix, how is Rogue feeling? Let's find out from the man himself. Thank you very much, Tasteless. And congratulations, Rogue. You're in the top four at BlizzCon at the WCS Global Finals for the second year in a row. How much more does it mean to you to do so, taking down such a tough opponent like TY in such a close series? Uh, 일단 uh, BlizzCon에서 2년 연속으로 4강 진출한 거 축하드리고요. 어 uh, 전태양 선수와 좀 되게 힘든 경기들을 하셨는데 그, 그 그만큼 어려운 성, 상대로 이겨서 기분이 더 뜻깊을 것 같은데 어 uh, 소감 얘기해 주세요. 어 일단 쉽지 않은 거라고 생각을 많이 했는데 어 역시 너무 태양이가 확실히 연습 때보다 방송 때 훨씬 더 잘하는 걸 어, 되게 많이 느꼈고 어, 솔직히 여기 오기 전까지 제 빌드가 좀 어, 마음에 좀 불안불안해가지고 불안했었는데 좀운 좋게 많이 이긴 것 같아요. 
So coming into this, I definitely didn't think it would be easy, but definitely as I played, uh, played against TY, I felt, again, that he plays better than he does in practice when it comes to these LAN events on stage. It seems like he's just able to turn it up, and so it was a really difficult series for me in that regard. And also when it comes to uh, this series against TY, I felt coming into today, I wasn't completely satisfied with the builds that I had, so I was feeling a bit nervous about that. So I am very, very glad that I was able to take it 3-2 to move forward. And now, interestingly enough, when I look at your match history against TY, you always seem to win when it matters. You, you won today, you won at the Katowice Grand Finals, and you won last year at the BlizzCon Round of Four. So why do you think that is? Uh, 전진병을 좀 많이 해줘서 어, 그거 덕분에 이긴 것 같아요. So he says, for some reason, whenever I play against TY, I really feel like fortune follows me. Coming into the matches today, I really prepared against Proxy Rex, and thankfully he did use that quite a bit in his series against me, so I think that is a big factor in my win against him today as well. Now, moving forward, if you want to make it to the Grand Finals for two years in a row, you're going to have to take down one of two Zerg players. It's going to be Serral or Dark, so what are your thoughts on those two players? 이제 결승전까지 가려면 세럴 선수나 이제 박명우 선수를 만나야 되는데 어, 그두 선수들에게 얘기해 주세요. 어, 저는 두 선수 다 저그대 저그전 너무 잘하는 선수들이라서 누가 이길지는 진짜 모르겠고 어, 저는 그래도 만약에 한다면 세럴 선수랑 좀 많이 하고 싶긴 해요. So he says, honestly, when it comes to these two players, I think they're both fantastic at ZBZ. Uh, so if you had to ask me to choose or predict who would be moving on to face me, it's really hard. But that being said, if you're asking me who I would want to play, I would pick Serral. So we'll see what happens as that is the last quarterfinal match of the day. Congratulations again on your second semifinal in a row. Kalaris, back to you. Thank you very much, Smix. And with that, Terran is defeated. There will be no more going through here in the global finals. Unfortunately, there for TY, but I think I speak for all of us when I say, what a series, especially game number four, Maynard. That one blew my socks off. Game four was one of the best TVZs of the year for sure. It was fantastic. It was really just a showing of what TY can do in this matchup when he gets the late game. Like yeah. we, were, we even we nailed it on the couch, right? We were talking about the late game abilities of Rogue, the late game abilities of TY. That was the perfect example of that. But a PSA to Terrence at home that have seen this BlizzCon, build your stuff at home, please. <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's not working anymore by the looks of it. Like, just, just, just pull everything back, build on the ramp, wall in again. Sure. It used to work out a long time ago. It I mean, used to be fine. He did mention in that interview, Nathanius, that he prepared for Proxy Racks, and of he seemed very he prepared for it. Look, man, all I've been doing is complaining <laughs> about how much Proxy stuff's been happening from Terran wrong. players for the last <laughs> few months. It's, it's insane. I'm glad that we finally reached a point where everyone's kind of been smacked around for it, because that's where all the Terrans have failed today, and we saw it fail as well. Not to discredit, of course, Rogue showing us again good control in the late game, but yep. TY still had his promise there. We, he had good Everything usage here. of the Ravens with the anti-armor right missile now. and the and again, Liberators getting that splash. It was all so big, weeks. and yeah, it's just one of those situations where you really overcommitted to the bit. It was to a fault on yeah. this yeah. proxy racks, and everybody's preparing for it. Why wouldn't you? It's all anyone does. Jeff? Strategy aside, I know we're sad to see these great Terran players go down, but that was one heck of a series. I have been at a lot of BlizzCons, I think all of them or something like that, but the moment where TY hits the anti-armor missile on that doomsday cloud of Zerg stuff, oh, uh, yeah. the second yeah, yeah. to last game, <laughs> I mean, I, don't, I hope people understand, if he doesn't hit the anti-armor oh. missile, if he doesn't have all the Corruptors clumped up, that's actually it for TY. He does not stop that army. He's doing amazing damage back at home, but he cannot kill that. All the production has to pick up and float away, and then it's just a bunch of bio against all of that, and he would have lost. That was that kind of amazing moment that I live for. Yeah. It's too bad that in game uh, number five there, he couldn't bring it home again as well. I think it's phenomenal to see Rogue move forwards here. Still, we have the potential of a back-to-back -back world champion here, which has never technically happened at all at BlizzCon. But overall, I still want to harp on the fact that 
game four was just fantastic. It's been the best game of the tournament so far, bar none, in my opinion. Mm. And for me, it makes me miss Ling Bay Muta. It yeah. just looked great. To speak to that, it takes so much skill and it takes so much ice in your veins to go that route because right now yeah. people are not doing Ling Bane Muta. And now it does still show up, but it has its obvious weaknesses. But to do it in this series against a player like TY and to have it that effective, by the way, I know he lost the game and a lot of people are going to point to that, but I don't think you look at the Mutas and say that's why he lost this game. And in a lot of ways, that was why this was as cool of a game as it was. It was really cool to see that. Really, really fun to watch that style. It's one of the things yeah. looking forward to is a possibly in the post BlizzCon patch coming a little bit back. Uh, but being able to see that range, the control, it's, it's really nice. Bit of variety to spice things up. And honestly, Rogue's one of the few players that's good enough to be able to do that and take a guy like TY all the way with him. Maynard, does that show you that Rogue has it in him to get back to back WCS championships? It means his ZVT is really good. He has to play a lot of <laughs> ZVZs. Uh, well, you know, at least the A ZVZ, at sure. least going up into, you know, maybe the ZVP later on. But um, I honestly think that the next, even though TY really put up a huge fight, if we're talking about the future of Rogue here, he has a very tough next series. I think Dark is a massive threat, and Serral, he's Serral. Yeah, yeah, you're not wrong. He is Serral. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you take a really close look, if you have a close look at Serral, you'll see that he is, in fact, Serral. Ah, there you go. A stranger did Perfect. not show up yep. wearing a Serral mask to this tournament. So no, there you go. It'll be difficult. There you go. Hey, great showing by TY, by the way, too. One of the things we went into this is saying <laughs> yep. he had kind of one of the bumpier uh, week or weekend one of BlizzCon, but he came out. And, uh, you know, it's such a short tournament where you don't get to see that much of these guys. It's yep. great that it was a best of five, but he took it the distance, had his chances, and he went in with a strategy that, yes, is much maligned, a lot of the proxy, but it was cool because a couple of times he came out behind or a little bit ahead, but the game kind of always flushed out the distance or, you know, Rogue ended it one time very fast. But great 